Welcome to Podcast Stories, a collaboration of Infar Media and the Region Media Group. Podcast Stories, where imagination meets your ears. Grouping One, Session One, Dr. Maxwell Lobos and the Unborn. Hi, I'm Dr. Maxwell Eugene Lobos. Science has been my life and my work for 45 years. Shall I talk about my experiments? Just in case? Are you sure? Well, before the incident, I had been getting those terrible headaches again. I have been having chronic symptoms all of my life. It is the birth defect. You see the deformity of my head? Its size? When the headaches come, it, has a, it is a nightmare, figuratively speaking. Well, it wasn't until that night that I found myself inside an actual nightmare. I sent Derek out, Derek Pierce. I was a friend of his father before he tragically died in Japan. Derek had just come back after living in there for decades. No one knew what happened to him since he was a boy. Did you know that the life expectancy in Japan is higher than most places of the world? It is very fascinating. No wonder they can focus on such an efficient transportation system. Sorry, Sergeant. Where was I? Ah, yes. Derek. I sent the young man out for some milk to go with my painkillers. Which is, by the way, the only thing that works for these headaches. And I feel, simply fell asleep, waiting for him to come back. But then I realized that I was in a dream world. Because I saw my family home in the claim clearing in front of the forest. But I saw that house burn down when I was 15, so it could not be real. From a distance, I could hear loud screaming coming from the house. It sounded like a woman in the pains of birth. I ran to the window to see a woman ready to bring a child into the world. And when the midwife moved, I saw that it was my aunt. She was my favorite aunt. But she was so sweaty, lying on that table. She saw me. She called out to me. She told me to come inside. As I walked to her, I saw myself in the mirror. I was 15 again. I was so shocked that I stopped to stare at myself. The midwife who was about 15 feet tall, was very angry that I was there. So she told me to stay out of her way. By this time, the baby's head was beginning to crown. My eyes began to burn because I was standing at the wrong end. Auntie Rosa saw me turning as white as a sheet. So she called me to hold her hand. This is when she told me that she was having twins. The first one would be called Vicket, and his natural abilities would have no end. He will go forth to destroy the world. Nothing to him would be withheld, but in his chest there will be an orb that will contain the answer to the, to the question. The second son would be called Image, but he will have no image. He will be as a shadow, even in the, day, the high daylight. He too will have great natural abilities. He will go forth to consume the life force from every human in existence. He will be a servant to his brother, and he will fear him. But I was afraid None of this was making any scientific sense. Soon, 
I had no power over my own legs because the doctor who came to make the delivery, he had no face. He had long burgundy hair, but he had no face. But I could hear his echoing voice telling her to push. Her claw almost broke my hand as she pushed and she pushed. When the first baby came out, the midwife took it to the corner in a blanket. Her second child was as dark like a shadow. In fact, it looked exactly like a shadow. I looked for the midwife to take the next child, but she was lying on the floor and the first child, fully grown and naked, standing over her lifeless body. I tried to take Rosa to safety, but childbirth had already taken her. The only option left was to save myself. So as I ran for my life, the second born was defending himself from the first born. Fifty feet away from the house, my legs stopped working. It caused me to land on my face. But when I turned over to see what was going on, the house was on fire. I was helpless and only could watch both things jump into my body. But then I woke up, covered in sweat. The headache was greater than it ever was before. My head was pounding. My vision blurred, phlegm filled my heart. I felt so sick that I could feel my stomach churning and preparing to erupt like a volcano. I tried so hard to fight it, but I couldn't see my pills. I felt my head splitting open, and indeed, it was splitting open. It was being pulled apart bit by bit. I could feel the bone in my skull slowly being pulled apart. I cannot explain what that felt like, but it was being pulled open by image. The second born, or should I say, unborn. Soon I could feel his hands as he forced his entire body out into our world. I thought that it was over. I thought it was the end, but no. The firstborn also, the firstborn also came out into this our reality. As I lay there in the fetal, with no motion and no strength to run, I saw them fight each other like rabid dogs fighting over a bone. My house was utterly destroyed around me. They were then gone as fast as they came. When Derek found me, all of my wounds were healed and I told him what had happened. He made a promise to hunt him down for my sake. And that is it. That is all I know. Now I am here. Is that all? You have been listening to podcast stories, Dr. Maxwell Lobus and the Unborn. If you'd like to hear more stories like this, please subscribe to this and like this channel. Podcast stories. We bring imagination to your ears.